To boldly go where no man has hopefully gone before. How do you use your rectum in a survival situation or in grid down as a medical device to actually stop yourself or your loved ones from dying? It's actually important to know how to do it. I'll show you the equipment. I'll talk about what solutions you should use. I'll talk about why Bear Grylls' famous clip actually has one or two things in it that I don't agree with. Settle back, lie on your left lateral and smile. Back in the dawn of medical history, nurses came up with this idea, and it's a good one. And you'll see the stills that we have left from rectal hydration. It works quite well. It's still actually used occasionally in pediatrics in the West. It's heavily used in areas of the world that are very poor. All you need is a tube, a little bit of lubricant, preferably water soluble, and a bag, and a willing participant. They have to be on their left lateral position, which I will show the picture of now, and they have to be as relaxed as possible. In the video, Bear Grylls shows himself biting a stick and looking all tense. That's the last thing you want. It slides in gently. One of the things you're going to have to do is hopefully have a gloved hand on, but remember, if your skin's intact, you can wash your hands afterwards and you don't need a glove. You don't in a survival situation. Gently insert the finger into the anus, which is the outside of the bottom, and you will just put it in about this far and you will feel a bit of resistance. Gently push through the resistance, you are then into the rectum. The tube has to go into the rectum. If you just put it into the anus gently because you're a bit timorous, the fluids will just flow out. It's also a good idea if the rectum's empty before this. Remember the fluid that's going to come out is going to come out with fecal matter unless you've been starving for an awfully long time. So it will be highly contaminated. Make sure it's drained well away from water sources. Again, that's not exactly what they did in the video, is it? Oh. See, the thing is, the colon can absorb water. It's actually designed to do that. When you eat and you chop up food and you add saliva and then it goes into the stomach and gets all churned around, it goes into the small intestines where a lot of digestion takes place, but almost no water reabsorption occurs. That all happens in the colon. I'm not going to get too technical here, but if you put the tube into the rectum with an intact anus and muscle system and hold it in for about an hour or so, you will absorb a huge amount of water via the rectum, more than you will absorb in a shocked patient by giving it as a tube into the stomach. Putting this tube in through the nose or the mouth into the stomach to hydrate people is really, really dangerous and risky and a high, high skill. But it doesn't actually hydrate them as well as the pretty easy skill of rectal hydration. So obviously most of this stuff are from poor countries. Right off the bat, number one, this is not true. It is true you don't want them falling over, but you have to be on the left lateral. So the left chest is down, the right chest is up. The reason for this is that the rectum bends, and if you put it in right lateral, there's a higher risk of perforation of the bowel, which will kill people. For that reason, this is a nursing and a medical act that should be prescribed, and you should not practice this or do this at home, nor should you do it in a survival situation. I'm only doing this video so you guys can think about the issues, just in case a doctor prescribes it and you're able to do it in SHTF. If you do do this and it's not prescribed by a doctor, I accept no responsibility. So this one's using it to give medicine, and it can be used to give medicine. A lot of medicines are actually given by the rectum in countries like France. Just be aware that if you're ever on holiday and you get sick in France, they give a lot of things like Tylenol per R per rectum. So that's showing you how to do it, but the technique is basically the same. Left lateral, visualize the anus, gently probe into the anus, make sure you go past the rectum and feel the little push as you go through gently, and then hold it together and allow it to stay in there for as long as possible so it gets absorbed. Practice makes perfect. A lot of nurses give enemas and insert things into people's anuses and into the rectum. So in theory, we should be good at it. One of the things I'd recommend you use is actually a red rubber catheter, just a basic red rubber catheter. I didn't bring one, so I forgot to. This is actually a rectal tube, and as you can see, it's quite long. The concept of this is not to put it in, this is my anus. It isn't to put it in like this and go like this. Do not do that. You're going to go in gently at the tip, even in the left lateral, 
Round about here you'll feel a little bit of resistance. Just let it gently go in to about there. Once you know you've gone through the resistance by about half an inch to an inch, stop. And then what do you do? Well, be wary of the fact that when you put these in, a lot of fluid can come out. There's a lot of fluid in the rectum. So be cautious putting it in. Don't put it in like that. So you can use a 2 me syringe. This is the slow way. These are a 60 mil syringe, whatever that is in America. And you would get your solution, which I'll get into in a minute. You would dry it up, put it in the bottom, and inject it in, specifically like that if you're going to give a medication. If you just want to pour it in, before you attach it, take out the barrel and connect it, and keep pouring water in. Quite a slow way of doing it. Now Bear Grylls uses a hydration pack, and that's a good thing. Remember the water's going to go, if you do it right, only one way, so the hydration pack should be okay to use afterwards. So I'd be a little cautious. The other way of doing it is to connect the tube to a Foley bag or a urinary drainy bag. So you'd fill this up first with fluid, and then you would attach it, open the stopcock and put it in. The advantage of this is the single-use throwaway system. Again, in SHTF, if you're using something like this, you may want to not drain the fluid back into it because you may want to reuse this. Again, drain it as much as you can, flush it with clean water, make sure it's inflated, sunny side up, and leave it for three or four days in the sun. If you're a bit of a wimp, you might want some gloves. You really don't need gloves. People, uh, people have issues with feces and urine, getting on them, and they can get very upset and sputin. But the thing is, if the skin is intact, you just wash it off. Now before I go into other stuff, I just want to point out to you that fluid resuscitation is dangerous. If they're not dehydrated and you give the wrong solution, they can get overhydrated, which can cause a whole bunch of issues. As you can see, you don't want to face that. This would only be used for somebody who's had a major burn or a major hemorrhage, or is obviously extremely dehydrated. So you need to know all the signs and symptoms of that, and the treatments for those three things, before you start ramming tubes into people and giving them fluid. What I will say is be very cognizant of the fact that some people have strong prohibitions about other people touching their anus, and people have issues there, okay? So it is quite easy to do this yourself. Uh, I'm not doing that today because it's cold and I don't want to have rectal fluid all over my carpet. I am trying to talk Kitty into doing it to me in the summer. We shall see. But to be honest with you, you don't need to see it. It's really straightforward. It is an American known torture technique. They will do this repeatedly to people uh, to try and break their spirit. And it works quite well. And it depends how you do it. They tend to do it with them face down and shove it in. Now I have obviously provided quite detailed and what I think are really good links. There's four of them, one of them is about Bear Grylls, it's kind of okay. But the other three are very specific and it's old knowledge that we we're losing from healthcare. So Bear Grylls is not a doctor and he isn't a nurse and he isn't a paramedic. And his medic is okay I guess. But unless it's dire and there's no choice, you really want to have the water pre-boiled and cleaned and filtered and cooled down. Think about a baby's bottle. Dip it in your elbow if it feels okay, it doesn't feel too cold or too hot. That's about the right temperature. Very cold water will cause them to go into further shock. And very hot water can burn them internally. So be aware of that. But you need to have that water filtered and purified as much as you possibly can. For the simple reason, in large parts of the world, including Canada, there are waterborne diseases. And if you just take water from a pond or a stream and shove it in somebody's rectum, they can in fact get infected by that route. So it's something you want to be aware of. The other thing you need to know is don't use more than a pint an hour and be cautious. Monitor how much comes out. As a nurse I'd want to know how many mils come out. I'd use a bag system in hospital if we were using this. But you don't need to know that. You can tell if a lot came out or a little. They do recommend that you use salt. Salt's quite important and there is pictures of coming up showing you how much salt you can use for oral hydration. I really do recommend you put salt in. Salt will help transport the water from the rectum into the cells, into the bloodstream. Pure water will have some effect but not much. Most of the water you put in will come out mixed with feces. But if you can put a bit of salt in there, that's great. Now they also recommend putting a little bit of sugar or molasses in it. You can do that. It's no big issue not to do that. It will also help transport the water 
from the rectum into the cellular system, into the body, so they're hydrated, but it can get quite sticky. And that's something you should be kind of wondering whether that's okay for the situation you're in. If it is, go for it. So you don't always have people on the left lateral, never on the right, never standing up, never bending over. They'll be lying down. Now, if they're unable to lie on the left lateral for whatever reason, you can in fact put it in. But in those conditions, I would definitively put my finger in first very gently and carefully to feel where the anus ends and the rectum starts and push it through the rectum. And then I would gently push the tube along my finger to get it into the rectum. Perforated bowel is common and it's not not recoverable in SHCF. They will get septicemia and they will die. Well, there you have it. Bottoms up. It's of course a funny topic and especially in our society people have a whole bunch of issues around the anus and the rectum but this is a skill that is not difficult it should not be dangerous if you go slowly don't use much test where you're going gently with your finger and have them in the left lateral it's a skill that's easy to do you can do it with mass casualties if they're cooperative not just one person at a time you can go around about six or seven people and do it and it will hydrate them enough to give them a much better chance of survival than if you tried to get fluids in by the mouth in almost all shock states any fluid going in through the mouth and any medications going in through the mouth won't actually be absorbed because of the low blood flow to the stomach and also to that small intestine. So you might also want to think about this as a way of giving antibiotics. So antibiotics come in capsules, but if you grind it up, this is how I would do it. I would grind it up, put it in there, get the water so all the medication goes down, then gently put more water on top of the medication, put this here, attach this to the rectal tube, and do this so almost all of the medication is going to go in and like they say get them to count slowly and breathe deeply for about three and then you can pull the tubes out you can also use this directly I don't recommend it because it's far too hard and it's far too likely to actually cause perforation I would like a soft rubber catheter which I have not brought but if I do do this I will be using a soft rubber catheter not the somewhat harder plastic rectal tube, which is more designed for a thing called paralytic alias. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. And if you did, give me a thumbs up and give me a subscription because I like to see the numbers. But I really care about comments. If you have any questions, observations or critique of what I've said, please let me know. And, and we can all talk and discuss things through. Because remember, no one is an expert, especially you and especially me. Toodles. This has been a 2021 Arctic Terrier production.